Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be taking this white background and colorizing it just like that. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, and of course, also share, and don't forget to subscribe as well. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is with my training course, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start off this colorizing project with a brand new file. Let's just close that down. Here's the original file right here. Now you can download this from my website. You'll find a link for that in the description. And because it's a tall image, it'll be useful to have this as a floating window like this so we can then enlarge this as much as possible here. I'll just stretch that out and zoom in a little bit here. That's pretty good. Now if you don't have floating windows set up, it's easy to do. Just go up to Edit, come down to Preferences and General, and right there, make sure these two boxes are checked, Allow Floating Documents, and also Enable Floating Document Window Docking. There you go. And then you can either dock your window or pull it out like that. Again, very useful if you're working on a portrait image as we have here. Now the first part about this, first thing to do is to take your background here and just make a copy of that and then hide the background. Now, most of the time I do this, and it doesn't really matter, I just do it as a safety just in case. In this instance, though, we will be changing this image. So it is important this time to actually make this copy and then hide the original. Just in case we mess this up, it can always go back to the original right there. It's a good habit to be in any case, but we will be making changes on this particular layer. Now, I want to separate the girl from the background. Easy to do. Let's just go over here and I'll grab the regular lasso tool. Make sure that you are on the new option right there. And then I'm going to set my feathering down to zero on this one. Normally I'll use a feathering of one, but this time I want a feathering of zero. Get nice tight edges if possible. And then I'll start right down here someplace and then just make a nice, fairly easy selection right around the figure. Try not to go into the figure. Don't go too far away from the figure, but just something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll be fixing this with the Refine Edge tool in any case. And just work up and around. A bit too far out there. That's okay. A little hard sometimes doing this with a mouse when you're going in certain directions. And come clear around just off the screen, straight across the bottom, and then let's finish it up right back where you started. And there's our basic selection. If you want to get rid of something like this, easy to do. Just come down here and use this, the subtract option, and just do just a quick little selection just like this, and then around. That just takes that bit out. Okay, here's our basic selection. Now, let's move this over here, come down where it says Refine Edge, click on that. Brings up the Refine Edge tool. Now, notice that this is a floating window in here, so you can put that wherever you want to. From right now, I think this is pretty good. So here's our layers right hand side, here is our image, and there is this. Now I'm leaving all of these at their default settings for this one. And you can see there's the kind of a small brush. You can change your brush size right down here if you want to. I'm going to set this up to 50, just a little bit larger there, as you can see that better. Now let's come right over where we're seeing this in white. Now I have mine set with the overlay option. That's kind of that pink coloration in here. So the white is the original background and this is the overlay that shows me where that selection is. And with that simply just come over and paint right over where that white is and that will allow elements to come in and find that actual edge. Now it might not be perfect along the shirt because we're doing white against white. So that may confuse it. We'll see how it comes out. The last step we'll be doing is just a little cleanup on the mask. Now we can't get this part in here. We'll take care of that separately after this first part is finished. And just work your way around. Just do little short bits like I'm doing in here and just kind of do little short brush strokes. And there we go. And just work your way around the image. Make sure you get a real nice clean image. And then Come down to the bottom, that will finish it all off. 
there's just a little bit right here where the mask kind of cut into the shoulder just a touch. Again, the shoulder is very close in color to the background, so we can fix that. Just change to this tool. This is the edge or erase refinements tool. Just go right along that edge like that, and that repairs that bit. Okay, that looks good. Now, what you want is to have this output to a new layer with a layer mask. Choose OK. And there it is. There's our new layer with a layer mask. The layer mask hides that background. There we go. Now, so I need to fix this a little bit right down here. So, for that, let's zoom in. There it is. And click on the layer mask side. Look for that light blue outline. There you are. And grab the second tool here. This is the polygonal lasso tool. Use this tool by clicking on dots, and then Elements fills the lines in between those dots. So I'll start right here and just work right along the edge. And just take your time with this tool. Don't go too fast with it, or it will collapse your selection. You'll have to do it over again. So take your time. And just a bunch of little short dots. And this will then build this selection. The next thing about this tool is I can move it around to find just the right spot. And then click at that spot. And it then locks that point. And I can then move on to my next point. If it's not exactly right, it's OK. Because we're using a layer mask, we can always go back and clean it up and adjust it later on. That's one of the reasons why I like using the layer mask whenever possible because it gives you that option to clean things up. Okay, just around these little bits in here and work your way back around to where you started from. See a little circle pops up right there next to that tool? That means that that's the beginning. Click there and then that makes that as a selection. Now, we're on the layer mask. There's our selection. Go to the paintbrush tool and have black as your foreground color right down there and simply paint over that. And what we're doing is we're painting black onto the layer mask, but we're only painting that in this one area so it then hides that, just selects that. Okay, once that's done, just deselect. Now, I missed a little bit on the thumb right there. I can fix that. You know, I'll do that by switching to white and then just come back in, just paint that in right there. Looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out again. I'll grab my zoom tool right here. Just pull that backwards until you fill our screen again. There we go. Okay, so far so good. Now, if we show our background again, there's the background in behind. I'm going to hide this at this point. I'll come back to that. Come down where it says background copy. We now need to begin to work on this. We'll be doing our coloration on this layer here. And we put our other layer on top once we're finished. Okay, for this one, I first want to darken down the corners. And we'll do that with the filter menu. Correct camera distortion right here. And there's a tool in here. There it is, a tool in here called vignette. Amount and darken. Just take the slider control and move it all the way to the left. And that darkens that down. It also puts in gray tones in here. This is the important part about this, is this one step. Very important because we're putting in value into that white background. And it's that value that we can change the color of. If I left this as white, I couldn't change the color. So I need to have something in there. And that's what this step does for us. It gives us those values in there. We can then change that color. Choose OK. There it is. Now for our color change, we'll use an adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, right here, hue, saturation. And where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, just check that, choose OK. There's the hue saturation right here. In that checkbox, took our adjustment layer here. That's how it's kind of inset just a little bit. It links it right to this one layer here. So they're now used or linked as kind of one layer. And what you want to do here is you want to colorize this. Notice how we now have color in there on that background. So colorize it, color the background. Also colored her, and that's fine. 
You can change the color by moving the hue slider. You get any color you want. Don't worry about her. All we care about is the background back in there. Now the colors that I used were on the hue. You can just type it in right here. I used 24. It's kind of a brownish tone in there. And then I did a lot more saturation. If you put your saturation up, you get more color. See this real strong color in there? The number I used here was 80, but it's still white in there. You can tone that down and get more color into this by bringing down the lightness. Move this to the left, and it gives you more colors. You can see right there, it gives you more color in that white area. And the number that I used on this one was a negative 56. So it's pretty dark, as you can see. But there it is. There's our nice coloration for our background. Again, ignore her. doesn't matter. But there's a nice background. Okay, choose to close this right there. We can now show our foreground layer again. There's a foreground layer. And it looks pretty good, but it's not perfect yet. Kind of a white fuzziness in here. It's kind of whiteness around the hair a little bit. The edge of the sleeve looks good here. A little bit right there that we missed in the layer mask. And a little bit of whiteness, right in, kind of lightness right in there. And some white against the edges of her pants down here. We can fix all of that stuff up here on the layer mask. Now where it's dark, where the background, or where the hair here is darker than the background, that's the hair, top of the hat up here, edge of the pants. On those, all we have to do is hide this edge of the hair from this layer and we'll see this layer in behind it. That layer, it's just darker. You see it right there, it's just a bit darker and that's fine. So we'll do that part first. We're still on the layer mask and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. There we go. Just kind of a white, you know, whiteness in here. If I was doing this on a light background, this would just blend right in and be perfect. But we're doing it on a dark background, so we need to do a little bit different technique for this. So what I want to do is I want to hide the top layer hair here and show the bottom layer hair through, which also is dark. To do that, we use black on the layer mask, black hides, and white shows. Let's just reverse our colors, little icon right there. Grab the paintbrush. It's a little bit small on that brush size. Let me just bring that up a little bit. Yeah, about 40 or so looks pretty good. And then it's come right in here. And what I'm doing is I'm hiding that hair on the top and I'm showing the hair underneath, which of course is perfect because it wasn't masked at all. Now this only works on the darker areas. Little scroll wheel there. But luckily the darker areas are around almost the whole picture. It's a little bit darker on the edge of the hat. That's okay. It will look just fine. So it's a little bit right along there. I'm using a soft edge brush. If you want to, you can hold the space bar down and move the picture like that with the space bar. And just work along the edge. Now the areas against the white shirt are a little bit more tricky. We'll get to that once we finish this step. Same thing here. And that's fixed that easily. Again, there's that space bar. And then just paint right over the edge of the hair. And I'll come right down to here. Now in here, there's this kind of a whiteness. Just paint over that. We're still doing black. And space bar. Let's just move along here and check all this. That looks fine, actually. A little bit right there. I'm just going to go right along the edge of the pants. Just to make sure it's nice and perfect. Now you don't want to use this on the white because it does this. We'll be seeing that colorized bit in behind the white. So you don't want that. Let's just undo a couple of steps here. Okay, I'll scroll over here, left hand side, and same thing. Just catch that bit of the pants. On the hand, it's a toss up, but I think I can use this and just go right along the edge. The hand's going into a shadow right there, so I can get away with that. Right there. A little bit tricky in here. Let's come back to that in just a second. Now there's some whiteness up around here. I'm going to leave that bit right here for last. Space bar. It's a little bit right there. I need to fix a little bit right here. I need to fix. Everything else looks pretty good. Okay, let's now zoom in on this part here. A little middle section here. 
I can do this darkening trick along this edge because there's a shadow here anyway, so I think we're okay on that along here, but our brush size is quite a bit too large. Let's bring our brush way down. It's a nice small brush size. There it is. And then it's come in just right against that edge, just painting right up against the edge. And again, what we're doing is we're showing the darker photo in behind, and where there's a shadow, that looks natural, so that is fine. And let's work along this edge. And go into the pants is okay right there. Because of course they're dark anyway. And it's just a little bit darker on the edge of the belt here. That also will look very natural, so that's okay. So in this instance here, we can do that trick, and that works out great. Okay, there are two spots over here. Right along in here, it's a little bit light. You can see that. And kind of weird looking. We need to fix that. And up along here, a little bit right in here, we need to fix. And a little bit right in there. So there's a few parts along this area here. Now because it's a light area, I can't paint into this. So what we need to do is use the polygonal lasso tool and then very carefully make a nice little selection right along this edge of the top here, right along the sleeve. And just take your time again with this tool because this will collapse if you click too fast. So just take your time. You know, a click and a breath and a click and a breath. And just slowly work around and get this nice selection made. And all the problem here is up this one sleeve. And this occasionally will happen when you have colors that are very close together. It confuses that refined edge tool. When you get too high, just hold the space bar down. You can then move your picture again. There we go. And let's just take our time and work up along the sleeve. Luckily, it's fairly straight. So the actual work is not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of patience because this tool requires some patience. And just find where that sleeve is. Again, space bar to move the sleeve and move the whole picture. It looks like right about here is about where that problem stuff stops. I'll take it clear to the top of the sleeve though, just to be nice and clean with it. With these wrinkles again, take your time. And you're trying to click right where the sleeve changes to the background. There's like a very, very small little gradient in there. You want to be going right into that gradient. Okay, real bad right there. And we can see the hair up there at the top. Once we get to the hair, we're fine. And again, space bar. And up here, we're okay. Let's take it out a little ways. Again, there's a space bar. And just do a few clicks like this, just way out here. There we go. And then bring it outside and then back around to where you started. And there it is. There's our selection. Now the selection keeps us from painting into the sleeve. Now go back to our brush. Brush size is too small. I want to bring the brush size up a bit. About like that. Just something like this. This is 32 pixels. And then just paint right in here. And we're painting out that stuff on the edge there, that kind of lightness in there. Again, space bar to move it. There we go. I'm using a soft edge brush on this, so it's going to make a nice, nice easy transition in there. All right, that does that. Let's zoom back out again. And there's a the part that we just did. That's that selection right in there. Go ahead and deselect, and there it is. That's all there is to it. It's fairly straightforward, as you can see. The real clever tricks are done with that layer mask, and because we're doing the image right on top of itself, it's really easy to fix the hair and give you absolutely perfect hair masking on this. So there's that before layer that we did, our color change layer. 
There is our layer mask girl in here. Let's just go ahead and see how this looks against the original. I'll grab this background layer, pull it up to the new layer button, and move it to the top of our stack. So there's the original, and there it is with our colorized background. Don't forget to click the like button and the share button, and of course, subscribe. And also take a look at my complete training course where you can learn everything about how to use Photoshop Elements and it's right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.